yourselves morally? <laughs> I've been thinking about words recently. Words are important, but context is also important. Who is saying the word where they're saying it? You can be walking away from a friend at night and you could say goodbye or good night, and they mean essentially the same thing. If you roll over in bed and say goodbye, <laughs> instead of good night, that is a threat. <laughs> That's a threat. It's uncomfortable. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My dad's side of the family is Jewish. My mum's side of the family is Catholic. They met in the late 70s, uh, early 80s, uh, and uh, so I was born and brought up Buddhist. <laughs> uh, it means I'm oppressed, repressed and depressed. <laughs> It means I've got all of the shit. I've got the Jewish neuroses, I've got the guilt of the Catholics, but I am at one with it. <laughs> okay, my mum's side of the family, they're Irish Catholics, convicts, umbrella stealers, the occasional Indigenous Australian sort of tucked away in the family tree. Not enough to really talk about, just enough that, historically speaking, the ind Indigenous blood I have is mostly on my hands. <laughs> what? What, your families weren't murderers? What? What, you don't have any murders in your family tree? <laughs> No, it's hard. I've, I've been very interested in the Jewish side of the, of the family, mostly because most of it isn't there. My granny was the only member of her family who survived the Holocaust. You know, the Holocaust. It's like um, the gritty reboot of World War I. Uh, <laughs> and my dad quit being Jewish in his 20s to become a Buddhist. Not that you ever escape being Jewish. He, he quit in his 20s. He's now in his 60s. Old women still come up to him at the shops and are like, Michael, when will we see you at synagogue? <laughs> Even I can't escape being Jewish and I've never been Jewish. I, ne I don't normally feel very Jewish until I'm in an Uber and the Uber driver starts talking about the Jews. <laughs> and then I get very educational very quickly. Did you know you lose one Uber star point rating for every pogrom you list? <laughs> My Uber star point rating is minus 25. It's, uh, I have to catch a taxi home like a monster. Uh, <laughs> It's a fascinating thing, and, and, and words are important. It's hard, it's hard in this world, and we're all being very sensitive now. It's difficult. We're talking about sexual harassment a lot. I think sexual harassment, I know this is going to be contentious, I think it's a great thing. <laughs> it's, a, it's a historical, beautiful thing. It's been around since the dawn of time. The first sun rose over the first humans, and someone went, hey, look at this, and this was his erect penis. <laughs> And now people are using the Apple Drop function on their phones to drop pictures of their penises into strangers' phones on the subways in New York. And on one hand, horrifying. On the other hand, what is art? <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. This, this is a beautiful thing. If you don't know what this is, it's a, it's a male jerking off symbology. It's a very... Tr I, I don't know if you're as familiar with it I, as I am. I'm a female comedian. You just flick the dick away from your ear and get on with your day. Uh, <laughs> Everyone's pretending why they don't understand this. Look at that. That's a beautiful gesture. Most men have access to the best feeling available to their brains at all times. Most men, anywhere, in a, on the bus, in a, in a boardroom, into a pot plant, wherever they want. <laughs> Just that, 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 that little effort and so much potential depending on where you aim it. Ooh, a, a, a baby. Ooh, modern art. Ooh, a lawsuit. You know? <laughs> that amount of effort should net you nothing more than an omelette. <laughs> it's, it's a hard world that we live in nowadays and it's, it's not all bad, you know? There are some beautiful men out there, some incredible men. I was walking home from New Year's Eve a couple of years ago and there was a gang of boys behind me, 19, 20, kicking over bins, making a ruckus. I looked over my shoulder and I, I heard a voice from the darkness call out, Hey boys, slow down, we are making the lady uncomfortable. <laughs> I didn't know boys that age knew other people were real. <laughs> Chivalry is not dead. That is a beautiful thing. It made me so happy. And you know, like, not all sexual harassment is bad. Some of it is incredible. There's a guy in the comedy scene at the moment, his, guy, his name is Derek McHugh, right? Which is great, because it sounds like a fake name. <laughs> And he is, like, he's a super creep. Lovely man, lovely man. Just, uh, just buys tickets to everyone's show, buys everyone drink, kisses you here, touches you here, offers to drive you home. Super creepy. Lovely guy, don't get me wrong. He wouldn't rape you if you asked him not to. Just... <laughs> And he is fantastic. He, like, he is a wonderful thing. I'm so glad that he exists because he is the level one boss. He is your training wheels creep. <laughs> like he's like a crocodile with the word crocodile painted across it and a siren. He's just coming at you like, ah. Like he's so, he, he trains you up, man. If you cannot get past Derek McHugh, the rest of the industry is literally going to fuck you so badly. 
<laughs> also metaphorically, but mostly literally. <laughs> Don't worry, though. All straight women in the audience, this is a message for you all straight women out there. Look into the eyes of the man you love most in the world and really viscerally understand that if you are ever the victim of a violent crime, he is statistically most likely to be the perpetrator. That's... <laughs>